we're taking advantage of controversy. I'll, I'll give you a good example. Uh, Coinbase. Oh, my gosh. Last year at this time, I believe the SEC served it with a Wells notice. Now, mm -hmm. in my history or in the business, anytime a financial firm gets served a Wells notice, run for the hills. Mm -hmm. But instead, we bought. We bought because we saw how the judicial branch was treating crypto. It basically was saying, SEC, you are out of line. Mm -hmm. And so we were looking very carefully at that and we bought into it. That stock uh, from its low to its recent high was up tenfold in one year. So we're willing to put up with short-term pain, no matter how con controversial it is, if we believe a company is well positioned and that it will begin and investors will begin to reap rewards within the next five years. Well, you can see from here, um, the top three holdings really are in the um, digital asset space, the digital mm -hmm. wallet space, uh, an exchange, and of course, Bitcoin itself. So the history here is uh, this is the only fund, at least as of now, that, ca that can hold... Um, Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. uh, GBTC uh, it was when we first put it in our portfolios in 2015, uh, Bitcoin was only $250. Today it's $62,000. Um, and yet our confidence remains so high that it is uh, the second largest position in the, in the fund. Um, the uh, the Bitcoin itself did, was the question, how high is high for Bitcoin? Mm -hmm. Because we do have a price, uh, we do have a price expectation out there for 2030, mm -hmm. and from sixty-two thousand dollars today, uh, we believe, um, and we're leaning towards our bull case. Our base case is roughly six hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Our bull case is one point five million. Why? Uh, mm -hmm. Three reasons. Bitcoin is three different um, uh, movements. Uh, it is. Uh, a technology for sure. Uh, it is a global rules-based digital monetary system. And uh, it is a new asset class. It is the mm -hmm. most important member of a new asset class. It's a very big idea. And so uh, we think it has miles to go with the SEC, you know, kicking and dragging its feet, approving the the big the spot bitcoin etfs um uh because the judicial system basically said you that is not your jurisdiction what you're suing uh this company that company and the other company for is not under your jurisdiction you're out of line uh, uh the judicial branch is coming our way and the legislative branch is coming our way so uh and of course i i just described a situation where emerging markets Think about the poor people in those emerging markets losing most of their purchasing power and wealth. They are going to try and save themselves. And if they have an internet connection, mm -hmm. uh, they should be able to have access to Bitcoin. And I think that's partly why some of these currencies are starting to devalue. Coinbase basically lost a lot of competition last year. Uh, FTX went under. And Coinbase, despite the to and fro with the SEC, is the most regulatory compliant exchange in the world. And it is uh, moving abroad uh, and, and uh, gaining terrific traction ab abroad. It has 100 million users right now, uh, but those are proliferating quite quickly. And then Block is also, most people know it for Square and mm -hmm. Cash App. Square for merchants, Cash App for consumers. We think those are merging. That's a two-sided platform that's going to become a positive feedback loop and disintermediate the banking system. But it is also surreptitiously uh, entering emerging markets through Bitcoin. Its sole focus in terms of digital wallets is Bitcoin and enabling merchants and really rescuing consumers in the rest of the world from their own depreciating currencies. So that's a big, big part of mm. uh, this, this fund. Yeah.
So one of the companies in our venture fund is Zipline. Zipline has traveled 75 million miles autonomously, um, delivering medical care, medical uh, products, eight pounds or less, uh, in Rwanda. That's where that's where it uh, and it has cut the um, uh, uh, the the mortality of women giving birth uh, by nearly half because it's been able to get the right medical uh, uh, um, medicine and medical equipment there. Um, it has signed a big deal with Walmart, not with not with Amazon, um, and. Uh, I believe Walmart will launch within the next, I'm going to say two to three years, a national drone delivery service uh, in all of the United States. Um, I think this is the way Walmart might leapfrog Amazon. And so, you know, Amazon's part of the Mag 6. Mm -hmm. You don't see that in our portfolios because... Uh, we think it's a mature company, uh, uh, certainly um, uh, on a top line basis. For for years, it grew in the 20 to 30 percent range. It's now low double digits. And we think uh, that social commerce and maybe Walmart with its uh, drone technology is going to take more share. It's got AWS, of course, with uh, good competition. It's a good business, but um uh, I think Microsoft and Google are becoming more ferocious in their competition. Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies tumble amid Middle East tensions. Bitcoin was down some 8% late on Saturday evening as US officials confirmed that the attack was imminent. Digital coins were some of the only risk assets trading over the weekend and the fall was seen as an initial reaction to the escalation of the tensions in the Middle East. By Sunday morning, it had rebounded to trade above $64,000. Other coins like Ethereum also saw heavy selling down by up to 10% in some cases. The cryptocurrency market suffered heavy selling overnight Saturday amid an unprecedented Iranian drone and missile attack on Israel. Bitcoin was down 8% on Saturday evening and digital coins were some of the only risk assets trading over the weekend. Bitcoin had been trading at around $70,000 on Saturday evening but plunged to below $62,000 according to data from Bitstamp exchange and by Sunday morning it had rebounded to trade above $64,000. The sell-off for Bitcoin was the steepest in more than a year according to Bloomberg with the coin hitting new records recently amid inflows into US spot Bitcoin ETFs which continue to drive the cryptocurrency's price action. In the Middle East, event overnight marked the first ins instance of a direct attack on Israel and Israel said that it had identified 300 threats of various types and eliminated 99% of them. The Bitcoin halving is expected this week and everyone's asking only one question. What will it mean for the price of crypto? The author of Crypto is Macro Now newsletter said that based on previous cycles, Bitcoin could go up as high as $450,000 over the next year. However, she also warned that there will be a more brutal weeks ahead. Other analysts warned that global instability such as the escalating conflict between Israel and Iran could hold back the gains. When it comes to the price of the Bitcoin, the halving has been baked into the cryptocurrencies program since Satoshi Nakamoto, the mysterious creator of Bitcoin who launched the cryptocurrency some 15 years before. It will occur when block number 840,000 is created, which is estimated to happen around April 20th. It will slash miners reward for mining new Bitcoin by half from 6.25 Bitcoin to 3.125, which will reduce supply and in theory increase the coin's value. And in theory could increase the coin's value. Historically, the price of the world's largest cryptocurrency has surged on the back of the previous three halvings, citing Bloom data, an analyst noted that Bitcoin's price surged 8,600% one year after the 2012 halving, 300% after the 2016 halving, and 560% after the 2020 halving. And if these patterns repeat, Bitcoin could reach 450,000 a year from now, or 270,000 if this cycle turns out to be more like 2016. History is only a guide, it doesn't mean that events are going to repeat again, but it also indicates that there could be a decent chance. He also noted that this 
cycle is obviously different as this is the first time Bitcoin reached a record price before halving. In the previous two cycles, it took more than 500 days for the cryptocurrency to set a new record after the halving. Does this mean the time to the next all-time high would be much shorter than in previous cycles? Could it imply a steeper correction after the event? There's no way to tell, especially with so many other market drivers at work. Coming again to the tensions in the Middle East, the comments come as Bitcoin has shed 9% of its price over the past 7 days to trade at $66,270. It dropped as low as $62,697 on April 13. The day show was brutal in markets and I wouldn't be surprised if there are more days like that ahead. The drop came amid tensions in the Middle East that escalated with Iran attacking Israel. Global instability and persistent inflation continue to stime a full-on bull run with Bitcoin halving in current sentiment and arriving flat. We also should consider the factors which are not priced in. He also rejected some analyst assumptions that the halving won't impact Bitcoin's price this time because people have known about it for a long time. But that would assume that both markets are efficient and everyone knows about the event. Both are obviously not true. All crypto investors know for sure is that the supply side of the halving impact, there will be fewer new BTC entering the market. So that's it guys from here today. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit the like button and do subscribe. I hope you all have a good day.